the world has experienced severe land degradation due to climate change, deforestation, drought, desertification and unsustainable land uses. Consequently, the productivity and health of farmlands, grazing lands and forests are damaged, which in turn harms the individuals and communities who depend on these resources for their food supply, health and income. But this is changing. Today, communities across the world are transforming their lives and reshaping their lands through a low-cost, simple and sustainable land regeneration practice called Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration FMNR. I came to know FMNR through World Vision Nyachike around 2018 and we were introduced to it through our organization Nyatike Mirema Community Forest Association. So we were taught on how to practice it, how to do it practically, and we were also encouraged to do it even at home and even teach other people to know it. What you need is only few tools. You only need a panga, a sharp one, maybe a jembe and a sickle. To, to start doing a seminar or if any simple tool and you don't have to buy it and you can only practice it even for five minutes you have, uh, you have pruned you have uh, you have nurtured one tree this area was known as an hardship area where it was drought everywhere there were no sanitization so trees has been cut for charcoal so that is how this place was before the introduction of FMNR here. How does FMNR work? Step one, survey land for sprouting stumps or seedlings and identify what species of trees are present. Generate a preferred species list with the community based on required uses of regenerated trees, local species availability, and possible restrictions to inform tree species selection. Step two, Select the species and stumps to be regenerated. Remove unwanted stems and side branches, leaving only the strongest and straightest stems. Step 3. For each stump, select 3 to 5 stems to keep and prune away the unwanted stems. Determine how many stems will be allowed to grow on each stump based on needs, species and objectives. In general, 3 to 5 stems per stump are recommended. Mark the stems you're keeping with a color drag or paint to help identify the selected stems and indicate to others that this tree is being managed. If tying a rag, tie it on a side branch to avoid the main stem being choked as the tree grows. For each remaining stem, prune side branches up to halfway up the trunk. Pruning too high up the stem may make the stem too fragile or top-heavy to survive wind or animals brushing against it. Step 5. After selecting, pruning and maintaining trees, it's important to protect your trees from damage through livestock, humans and or environmental hazards. Examples may include 1. Pruning side branches and leaving 10 to 15 centimeters of side branches unpruned to deter livestock. 2. Setting aside a small portion of land each year to regrow trees away from livestock. In the second year, grazing is allowed among the first group of trees and the new location is selected for excluding livestock and practicing FMNR. 3. Tying any thorny prunings around the stems to be regenerated to discourage livestock. 4. Tying multiple stems together to make it harder for livestock to damage them. Step 6. Prune unwanted emerging shoots every two to six months as needed. Periodically return to the trees and curl emerging new stems and prune side branches from time to time. Step 7. Utilize tree for plant purposes, harvesting branches, portions of wood or the whole tree depending on the land user's needs. When harvesting, it is important to ensure there is no danger of replacement branches being damaged by livestock. The tree recovers quickly and the land always has a measure of protection from the standing tree. After the introduction, it is a miracle. There is a big change. People are now conserving trees. People are now practicing FMNR. As a community, it has helped us. Now we can get rains twice a year. But 
earlier before, we were only getting rains once, and if it comes for the second time, it won't last. As a woman, FMNR is helping me in that. Long time ago, I or my children used to go to the bush looking for firewood. But now that I'm pruning the branches of those my trees, I can leave them and then after that I get the firewood from those my trees. Secondly, in this our environment, we used to go about five kilometers during drought to get water. But now that we have many trees, those trees act as water catchment, we can get the water easily during rainfall. Again, the branches of those my trees, I can prune them, burn the charcoal, I can sell some, some I can use to cook. I have more time with my family because of instead of going to the bush far away getting firewood, I can access it easily around my home. Instead of going far away fetching water, I can access it near my home. For the community to take full ownership and responsibility of FMNR practices, their capacity needs to be built with the knowledge and skills to not only successfully practice FMNR, but also to work together to do it. In addition to capacity building, other skills a community may need to sustainably spread the FMNR movement include 1. Create and use bylaws. Local officials and leaders should be part of the process of creating and supporting bylaws for FMNR. 2. Advocate for greater support of FMNR from local leaders and government officials. 3. Work with champions. FMNR champions are valuable due to their ability to share their knowledge and experience and teach others how to practice FMNR. 4. Establishment of FMNR or NRM committees. 5. Development of land use and water management plans. 6. Strengthening of bushfire prevention structures. There are structures we have put in place to protect these areas where we practice FMNR. For instance, we were helped to get signposts where the community knows that this is an area where the community practice FMNR and it is out of bounds. So you cannot just walk in and, and uh, cut trees. We are also working closely with the uh, Kenya Forest Services. We partner with the national government administration officers at the grassroots levels. We partner with the churches, schools, and other organizations. And also we have received a lot of capacity building from World Vision. So now we are able to sustain ourselves because FMNR itself is able to sustain us. We are getting pasture, we do farming inside FMNR sites, so we are also getting fruits from the FMNR and now also we are able to conserve the, the rare species of trees. So we are able to sustain, even after the World Vision has left us as an organization, we are able to continue with FMNR. The economic activities that FMNR has helped us with as a group is, one, we can use the money from the charcoal that we have burned to do what we call saving and transformation. Saving and transformation is whereby you save your money and at the same time you can loan it. Another one, FMNR has helped the group in doing businesses. Most of the group members has engaged in businesses. The money that we save from the saving and loaning and the business is helping us in that some we pay school fees with, others can help us in our houses in that we can use them to buy food, we can use them to buy clothes, and some in other relevant activities. The community can effectively implement farmer-managed natural regeneration, FMNR, by devising a vision statement that states what they want to achieve. The vision statement should outline a goal for their work. 
it is also very important to jointly formulate an action plan that turns vision and goals into reality. These goals should be specific, measurable, actionable, realistic and time-bound. The FMNR action plan should cover the following. What work will be done? Who is responsible for doing it? When each action will be completed by? What materials and funding are needed? Where the work will take place? When land productivity is restored, livelihoods can be restored, which in turn can enable communities to pull themselves out of poverty.